Hello and welcome to Critical Hit Wargaming. Today we're going to be painting a Stormcast Eternals Storm Drake Guard, or a Night Draconis, if that's what you're going to be painting instead. And we're going to do that in two hours. It is possible, and that's using the box art scheme as well. So let's get started. Here's a list of paints you're going to need. It's 17 in total. Feel free to pause the video and jot them down if you're going to be copying this scheme. Otherwise, we'll get on with the video and you can see them in use as we go through painting this beast of a dragon. First job, as always, is to undercoat the model. And here we've used Wraithbone, which gives us a nice, good starting point. It's quite bright because we're going to be using some quite bright colours initially. Then we're doing some dry brushing, filling in all the details, and then that'll be it done. As for the rider, we've gone with a gold undercoat. In this case, I've used Colorforge Gold, which is a fantastic range of new undercoats from a company called Colorforge. It's Gauntlet Gold is the colour I've used here matched to Retributor armor and it's exactly what you need to get started. For the dragon we're going to start with contrast medium and pterodon turquoise in equal measure. I'm going to go through how to mix them now. What we're going to do is apply one blob of pterodon turquoise straight out the pot, stick it on your palette. You don't need to be particularly accurate, we're not doing chemistry experiments here, we're just going to paint something. So I've got a good healthy blob there, I'm going to wash my brush off give my contrast medium a shake and then I'm going to use three blobs of contrast medium. So it's three to one is the ratio you want to work with. So once you've got that mix, we're going to start applying it straight onto the model. Now if you look on the box art, you'll see that it divides quite nicely between the sandy colour that is the underside of the dragon and then all of the scales that go on the top. So first we'll go around the body and uh, as neatly as possible, but also as quickly as possible, get all of this paint all over those scales and you'll see that the contrast settles really nicely into all of the recesses. Now make sure that uh, you mix your paint consistently, or that 3 to 1 ratio that we just did, um, otherwise you're going to have some inconsistent tone of turquoise around your model. Where possible, leave the straps and any other areas that will be painted a different colour later on. Try and leave those because it just makes it a little bit easier to paint as we, uh, as we get on to the later details. Once you're done with the body, you need to flip your model over and start working on the wings. Now the way to do that is to dunk your brush in your contrast paint and run it along the spine. Uh, so there'll be a nice thick layer of paint there and then as your brush runs out of paint, then start moving towards the middle of the wing and that's going to make it look a little bit more washed out. To further help with this, what you can do is put your brush in a little bit of water and then run that over the center of the wing as I'm doing in the video there. That's going to disperse the paint even more and further emphasize that effect. For the underside of the wing you just need to paint in the spines leaving the membranes completely clear. Now once you've done the whole model this is what it's going to look like. It's a nice strong turquoise colour that pretty much matches the box art. You can use other colours if you've got them, so you could use Achillean green or you could use Aethermatic blue, but they come out too blue. It just doesn't look right. This was the closest colour I could get. I think you'll agree it looks pretty decent. Next, equip yourself some Reichland Flesh Shade. I'm going to grab our rider whilst the rest of the blue is drying and we're going to give him a full coat of Reichland Flesh Shade and that's going to highlight all of that gold armour. Next we're going to go back to Pterodon Turquoise and this time we're going to use it straight out the pot and that's to paint the scales and all of the fur that's hanging off the back of his legs and off the side of his head. Now make sure you're nice and neat so you don't ruin all of the other blue that you've just gone round and done. And with that done, the model's going to look something like this. All of those darker pterodon turquoise areas are done. We've done his eyebrows, we've done his little horn things, the hair. And uh, it's looking pretty decent. Um, and more importantly, it's looking a lot like the box art. So let's move on to the next job. What we're going to do now is an optional step, but I think it looks really good, so it's worth doing. It doesn't take very long. Using your pterodon turquoise straight out the pot, we're going to draw some little patterns on the skin of the dragon. It's really, really simple. You're just going to draw some little downward arrows that aren't straight. 
you want to make them look quite natural and kind of wavy and uh, just do them down to the scales that are halfway down his tail. You want to go all the way down the tail doing this and then looking from the top of the model down you just want to make sure they're symmetrical on the other side of the tail. Doesn't take very long but looks really decent. And that's our dragon skin finish. As you can see from the top down I've done exactly the same on the other side. And next we're going to use Skeleton Horde Contrast. We're going to mix it again with Contrast Medium at a ratio of about 2 to 1, maybe 3 to 1 um, Contrast Medium to Skeleton Horde. And that's going to give us a nice, not glaze and not really a wash, kind of halfway in between that we can use to colour the uh, wings and the underside of the dragon. And there's our fully mixed colour. What we're going to do now is kind of the same as what we did on top of the model, on the wing membranes on the upper side. We're going to use the heaviest flow off of our brush on the edges, and then as our brush starts to run out of paint, we're going to move to the middle to paint the centre of the membrane. And that is going to make it look a little bit more washed out, and is going to save us a little bit of time later on when it comes to dry brushing. And once you've done the wing, start working on the underside of the model. Now if you're an idiot like me, you may find in your haste to paint this quickly that you have painted an area that should be a different colour. If that's the case, then just get your wraith bone and paint over and correct it, and then just fill it in with the appropriate colour as I've done here with Skeleton Horde. Once that skeleton hoard's dry, this is what the model is going to look like, pretty close to the box art. We've not spent a great deal of time doing it right now. Once you're on your fourth or fifth dragon, if you're running an all dragon list, you're going to be able to do this pretty quickly. You might get a little bit of splodge drying of the contrast paint, but we can fix that later on when it comes to dry brushing. Now, grab yourself some Ultra One Grey, and we're going to do a fine dry brush over the top of all of the scales, mainly the scales that are turquoise. Go around the whole model being careful not to get it on too heavily because otherwise it's going to give some weird highlights especially to the darker of the uh, of the turquoise so just take it easy less is more with dry brush you can always add more but it's very difficult to take it away also be sure not to get it on any of your uh, nicely painted sandy color skeleton horde areas once you've done that, here's where you're at. It's only subtle, but that dry brush kind of brings all of the colours together, especially on the face. If you turn around and have a look at it, you'll see that it starts to bring all of those colours together and really pick out the raised details on the dragon's face. If I can focus it in properly there, you'll be able to see it. Next, go back to your wraith bone. What we're going to do is we're going to dry brush the wing membranes. Now, you want to do it mainly down the centre. It's going to catch the subtle ridges that are running down the middle of the wings. If you've got any splodges of uh, skeleton horde that have dried in little patches, and what you can do is dry brush in a circular motion, and that will cover those up. Next, grab another contrast, which is Volupus Pink. And we're going to use that to paint the inside of the mouth. You don't need to be particularly accurate here, but you do need to keep the paint inside the mouth. You want to paint the roof of the mouth and the bottom of the mouth and the tongue. Just really kind of get it in there, uh, whilst being careful not to get it on any of your blue. It doesn't matter if you get it on the teeth, however. Next, grab some Cantor Blue, and we're going to paint in the armour on the underside of the model and on his forehead. Don't forget that little bit as well. You'll need a couple of coats of Cantor Blue because you're painting over a bright undercoat. It tends to go a little bit transparent, uh, and you'll see some not-so-solid areas of colour. So just give it a few coats and get a nice overall blue. With that done, switch to Cygore Brown Contrast. We're going to use this to paint in the leather straps and all of the talon claws and the teeth of the model. Now, this doesn't take too long to do. Just go around, be nice and neat, and do not get it on any of your turquoise because it becomes very difficult at this point to cover over any mistakes.
And with that done, it's looking pretty good. We've got the blue done, we've got his saddle done, we've got the straps done, and we've got all of the claws and teeth done. So there's not a great deal left to do, as many of the gold details, which we'll go on to do next. And then uh, we can move on to the rider. To do the gold, we're going to need, funnily enough, some gold paints. We're going to use Retributor Armour, and we're going to paint in all of those armour panels. There's not really much more I need to say about that, other than give it a couple of good, solid coats uh, to make sure that the gold stands out and doesn't go a little bit transparent, as it tends to do over the top of a bright undercoat. Next up, we're going to use Nuln Oil, and that's going to be to shade in all of the blue areas. Return to your Reichland Flesh Shade, and we're going to use that to shade in all of the gold, just as we did with the rider. Next we're going to switch to Lead Belcher to paint in the final detail on the dragon, and that is the little buckles that go on the straps and connect to the armour panels. Grab your own oil again and then using a slightly more detailed brush, just go over those areas we just painted with the silver. Now you're probably asking yourself, why didn't we just do this before the blue? And the answer is that I forgot. Sorry. It's highlighting time now, so we're going to use some techless blue and we're going to go around the edge of the armour panels with a detail brush, which is going to give it a quick edge highlight. We could leave this out if we wanted to because it is a speed painting guide after all, but if we don't do it, it'll look crap and we don't want it to look crap because we are speed painting with style shall we say now all joking aside anyone who's watched this channel before will know that although it's a speed painting channel first and foremost we like to paint things in such a way that it doesn't look like we've just speed painted them and one of the best ways we can do that is chucking in the odd highlight here and there and this is one of those times that we're going to use just that technique in order to uh, give the illusion we've spent more time on things than we actually have. And here's what our dragon looks like 99.9% .9 completed in about an hour and 40 minutes using the box art scheme, not bad at all. Next we're going to switch to Sigmarite and we're going to start painting the very final things to take it to 100% complete, and that is to give it a very fine dry brush using Sigmarite. If you don't have Sigmarite, you can use Liberator Gold. It's just a little bit different. Sigmarite's a lot better, so pick yourself up a copy if you're painting anything to do with gold. Same applies for our Knight Draconis here, just Give it a good dry brush all over that armour, catch as much of the detail as you possibly can, and just give that armour a nice highlight. Next you'll need Stormhost Silver, we're going to do another dry brush, but this time with practically nothing on your brush. I can't emphasise enough, if you've got too much on your brush, you will just turn your model silver. This needs to be the faintest highlight going, in order to make it appear like a subtle, worn effect, as opposed to uh, turning your Stormcast Eternal into a Bretonian. And once it's all dry and done, here is what the armour will look like. It's got some subtle highlights going on, but it's got a lot of depth and it's looking pretty decent. Now we're going to return to Cantor Blue and we're going to paint in all of the blue details on the Knight Draconis. In this case it's going to be the detailing on the inside of the shield, it's going to be his shoulder pad and we're going to do his entire cloak using Cantor Blue as well to save ourselves a bit of time. You may want to use a detail brush to do the shield as it's a bit time consuming and a bit fiddly. You don't want to ruin all of your gold. And there's what the shield looks like finished. But as you can see on the back where I'm doing the cloak, that it comes out a little bit pasty over the top of gold. So make sure you give it a couple of coats so you get a nice solid and regal blue. Whilst your blue's dry and grab your corn red and we're going to use that for the one sole job that corn red has in this tutorial and that is to paint in the horse's mane slash dead fox slash whatever he's got attached to the top of his head. Next grab yourself some Corax white, we're going to paint in a couple of details, first and foremost painting in the sword and the flames coming off the sword. We could fanny around spending ages painting the actual flames in proper flame colours, uh, but that takes time. 
and we're trying to paint these things quickly and they already take long enough up to this point so we're just going to paint it all white and then we're going to give him an electric type sword because he's a stormcaster turn and they're really into that sort of thing when you finish with the sword painting the other detailing on the shield um, be careful not to get it all over your blue and all over your gold it's quite easy to do after that grab some rhinox hide we're going to paint in the leather details that's the straps attaching to his stirrups his belt and a little pouch he's got on his back next you'll need screamer pink and we can use that for one little job as well and that's to paint in the handle of his sword Next we'll have some medium silver, I'm going to use lead belcher and we're going to use that to painting any silver details which will be his stirrups that he's got his feet in so he doesn't fall off his dragon and uh, the blade of the swords if you're painting the standard uh, storm drake guard and then the chain mail on the back of his armour. Grab some black, in this case I'm using Abaddon black, Abaddon black, however you want to pronounce it, I'm going to paint in the cloth between his armour. And here's what your model should look like up till this point. It's looking pretty decent. All of the base coats are done and we need to switch to some shades to get this thing finished. The first one you're going to need is Nuln Oil. We're going to use that to shade in all of the leather areas. So all of the Rhinox hide things we painted, his belt, the straps and his little pouch and all of the lead belcher areas. When you're finished with those, turn him round, get to your shield and you're just going to do a little low light with known oil and that's going to be on the inside of the shield where the blue is try not to get it on the white try not to get it on the gold because you'll discolor them and it'll look a little bit weird once you've done those areas turn him round and then give the cloak a good covering with known oil next grab some druchi 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 the, the purple wash grab the purple wash and put that all over the handle of his sword Next grab yourself some Ethermatic Blue, which would basically just be renamed Plasma Gun Blue because that's all anyone uses it for. But in this case we're going to use it on a sword. So straight out of the pot, just put it all over the bits we painted white on the blade and the flames coming off of it. Easy. Next grab your Cantor Blue. What we're going to do is bring back up some of those areas on the cloak where the shade has settled out in the open. Uh, it looks a bit patchy as you can see in the video there. So we're just going to go over it, make it a little bit brighter again. It's going to make the cloak look a bit more regal as befitting of a knight of the Stormcast Eternals. Next return to your Techless Blue highlight. And we're going to give the cloak a quick highlight on all of the raised areas. Go back to Orthuan Grey and we're going to use that to give the blade a quick dry brush which is going to highlight all of that electric smoke stuff coming off of it. I don't know what it is actually, it just looks like magic stuff and that's all we need really. It does the job. And here he is, after a long slog he's finished. Stick your rider on top of his mighty dragon mount and that's it, they're done. This is Stormcast Eternals, Stormdrake Guard in the standard box art scheme. I've not found a single tutorial yet on YouTube, I'm sure there are some, but I couldn't find any on just how to paint the basic poster boy standard scheme. So that's what I've gone for in this video. Obviously there are quicker ways you could paint the dragon. You could paint it all one colour, such as red or grey or something like that, or green even if you want to go traditional, um, and that'll be quicker of course there is but if you're going to paint it in the box art scheme then this is probably the quickest way you can go about it if this has been helpful please do like subscribe leave a comment let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see and i will endeavor to paint it in the next couple of weeks we'll be doing the fellowship the cave troll to get our barlin's tomb stuff finished uh, and then we might move on to some other age of sigmar stuff who knows thanks for watching